Welcome to Chris Parkin Shooting Sports. Today I'm out shooting with a Schmeiser SP15223. This is the 18 inch barrel version, which is screw cut for a moderator or muzzle brake at the end. Uh, it comes supplied with a muzzle brake actually, but I do like a sound moderator myself. We've got lots of M lock rail here, Picton on top, scope mounting capabilities as is normal. Uh, it's a completely free floating barrel, it's a Walther barrel. The barrel does seem to be extremely good. I'll show you some groups and targets later. Shot in real world conditions, not just some underground test range. Usual AR15 controls, so it's got you know mag release here, comes with a 10 round magazine, there's also a spare fitted in the butt, so mag release is there like that, drops out, it's also on the other side, you do the same thing, bolt release is on that side, or there is also a bolt release there, and it does last round hold open on the magazine, so if I drop that out, that shows you how it can function normally cycling the rounds. Usually AR15 componentry, we can strip it down, with the pins there to clean it out, trigger group, etc. I may or may not leave that bit in the video because YouTube won't necessarily monetize that. And if I take the front pin out as well, the whole upper comes away from the lower. The main thing you'll note on here is we've got supplied with a big side lever. And that has got a small ball detent on the top. Take that out, the side lever comes away because if you do want to strip the rifle down for cleaning it, you have got to take the side lever off. So if I just pop that open again, you see we can't take the bolt groove out with that handle on. Now there's a little ball detent on the top, so you can use a tiny Allen key or the tip of a Stanley blade or something like that. We'll just pop that, that comes straight out, and the whole thing disassembles as normal. So just slide that back in, clip the upper back down. Other main factors to mention is this is beautifully made in Germany. There's no rattles, no wobbles, no uh, you know bad alignment parts fitted on the stock. It's not just a kind of parts bin special. Usual AR15 safety catch, so we've got ambidextrous, 45 degrees, fire safe, etc. Nice cheap piece there. Length of pull isn't super long, and we've got sling at the back, and you've got plenty of space on the front to add whatever you want. Slot your sling through there, or you can use the QR studs here. So I'll give you a little bit of accuracy and velocity testing on this on film once I've got it on the bench. Um, and there we go. So, mag loading is super easy, of course. You can use any other AR15 magazine accessories, regardless of volume. There's plenty of hand space under the stock, and there's a nice slick bag rider underneath. I was very happy with the double radius cheek piece shape. It gave good scope alignment, and there was no resonance coming through the rifle and the buffer tube. Very little recoil from 223 anyway, especially with a sound moderator on. It fit nicely under the cheekbone and didn't displace the jaw at all. There's a slot in the bag rider for the rear end of whatever sling you're using, attached with M-lock at the front probably. This is without doubt one of the best triggers I've used on an AR-15, regardless of whether it's a factory or a complete custom rifle. The pulls were super crisp. It's pretty easy to see just how fast to reload they are. Just grip it and rip it, and the large Raptor style side handle makes it so much easier than using the T-handle on the back. I'm also not a fan of the stupid T-bone shaped extensions on T-handles that hit you in the nose when you recycle the action. Basic specifications, 458 millimeter or 18 inch barrel. Trigger weight is 2,313 grams, which is five pounds, 1.6 ounces. Overall length is 920 millimeters or 36 and a quarter inches. I've got to say though, at the start, if you tried to slow close the bolt, you didn't necessarily always get a proper firing and you sometimes got a dead man's clip. You really do need to let it close under its own full momentum for absolute 100% reliability. But, you know, if you need to keep the noise down a little bit when you're hunting or foxing, you will get used to it. And in fairness, the rifle got better as it wore in. Of course, we lose a bit of velocity because of the shorter barrel, but that's one of the acceptances you make of the compact handling. It's important to say that all the groups shot here were at 100 metres on a slightly breezy day. The barrel hadn't been running at all. Nearly all this was filmed with a rifle straight out fresh from the box or in its primary cleaning. And it, it did get better as it was shot in 
and just allowed to settle into its own skin. I have to say though, there's something beautifully homogenous about the way the action just rings so precisely when all the locking mechanisms close up. It's a very homogenous, beautiful engineering feeling. Length of pull is 343 millimeters or 13 and a half inches. Overall weight is 3.7 kilograms or 8.2 pounds. Of course, there's loads of Picatinny space for optical accessories, and all the M-Lock gives you extra room for illuminators if you're using night vision or other accessories like slings, etc. I also used a small piece of Picatinny rail that was included with the rifle, and I ran that with an Atlas bipod, and also used it on the Sunway Photo tripod. Primary extraction was plentifully forceful and ejection was very, very enthusiastic, flinging brass all over the place. I certainly had no problems with cases sticking or jamming in the chamber. The gun got a bit wet on this snowy day, you can see we were using it, and there was no corrosion noticed at all on the barrel. It's a bit trickier trying to clean things off on the steelwork through all the M-lock slots and things in the forend, but no problem. And the next day, still no problem. I just gave it a spray with some light oil and just double checked there was no moisture present. These guns have been misadvertised in some places with an 8 inch twist, but no, they are a 9 inch twist, so yes, yeah, suitable up to 69 grain bullets. But the low foul wall of the barrel was very impressive and suffered no great thermal drift or any problems as it got hot. Because believe me, with two 10 round magazines, we did get it quite hot. The right side bolt release is very cool actually, but you do learn to keep your index finger quite flat down to the action, otherwise the Raptor knob does knock the back of your knuckle as the bolt closes. I've never really been an AR-15 guy, and I've shot hundreds and hundreds of rifles. But you know what? I think this is the first AR-15 I've really taken a shine to. The handling is superb, and I just like the character of the gun. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, please like, please subscribe, please comment, because your comments are what drive the videos. And don't forget to click that notification bell. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.